is your influence in the music of the birds? Uh, how big is my influence? <laughs> because you were a country and western musician. Yeah. Uh, the early, you know, early bird albums, uh, starting with uh, Notorious Bird Brothers, there was a couple of country things on there. That was probably because, you know, I was in the country and they hired me, you know, as a studio musician because that's what I was doing. And uh, that album and uh, Younger Than Yesterday, there's a couple of country things on there that uh, I guess I put in a little influence, in, you know, of country music and the birds. Was it very hard to change from a country and western musician to a rock and roll musician? No, no, are now? not really. It wasn't that hard to change because, you know, I still... Uh, I'm still playing country, you know. I mean, it's, it just comes out that way. Kind of a country rock guitar. I don't really consider myself a rock and roll guitar player. Even now, you know. Uh, you have a strange guitar. Could, could you t tell us something about your guitar techniques and so on? Uh, Gene Parsons and I, you know, dreamed up this thing about putting a, a pedal on a guitar like they have on a steel guitar. They have ten pedals, you know, on the floor. So... We started experimenting around, and he built it, and uh, it just hooks onto the strap. You just pull in the neck, and it pulls up one string. So it's like having one pedal on a six-string guitar, which is a, you know, gives you a country sound also. Have you any explanation why country and western is popular in Europe? Because it's not their music. Uh, it's it's hard to say, really. Uh, you know, like in the states. In California, a lot of the people think that the country rock is really happening in England, so let's all do it. And vice versa, you know, the people in England and all over in Europe really think, uh, you know, that's really what's happening, so let's do it. I, most of the groups are from uh, America, I guess, the country rock groups. Many people consider country and western as a, let's say, a right-wing music. When yeah. I think, uh, for example, um, uh, Merle Haggard. Yeah, well, probably because of the lyrics and the songs, you know, the right, right wing. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but the music isn't really... You know, it, it comes from that environment, I guess, but it's always been in the other environment, too, you know. Old-time yeah. folk music, I mean, you know, that's that's really big in the cities. You know, you know. I mean, it's still doing good, you know, folk music. There's still a place for it. The Kentucky Cardinals, could you tell us something about that? Uh, yeah, that was a group that uh, originally started with three brothers, you know, my two brothers and I. I was ten when we first started, and we were called the Country Boys, and we just turned into a bluegrass band. I mean, we started out country, old-time country, and we got a five-string banjo player and fiddle player, and went on for about 14 years playing bluegrass music, and we changed our name to Kentucky Colonels, done, you know, a lot of TV shows and all the big... Uh, folk festivals and things like that. We've done okay for a few years. Are your brother still in music? Uh, yeah, or one of them is. He's in Nashville playing with Lester Flatt uh, from Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs. And the other one is uh, a road manager for Oliver Guthrie. He plays music still every once in a while. Can't find a, a group to really stay in, you know. The first two times were with uh, the birds. With the birds, right. Yeah. Does this mean that you, that you uh, came with, the, with uh, your new group to this country, that uh, the birds doesn't exist anymore in the uh, uh, lineup of which you were a member? Yeah, right, they don't exist uh, as any group, as far as I know. You know. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to go back out as even you know the original birds. Mm -hmm. Even though they did an album, I don't think they'll go out on the road. Mm -hmm. Clarence denkt niet dat uh, de birds in de nieuwe bezetting, dat is dus de oude bezetting, de oorspronkelijke, die dus net een LP heeft gemaakt, ook in die bezetting een, uh, 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 op tournee zal gaan. In ieder geval bestaat de bezetting waar hij van deel uit maakte, bestaat uh, niet meer. Dus eigenlijk uh, ziet het ernaar dat we geen uh, birdsconcerten meer uh, kunnen verwachten. Wel de Kentucky Colonels. What, what was the history of the Kentucky Colonels? Well, it's a group that started uh, with my brothers and I, back in like 1954, uh, 54, when I was like... 10 years old, uh -huh. 10, 12, and 16, we were real young, mm -hmm. and uh, the group went on for about 10 years, and then we all split up, and 
done our own things. Yeah. And then we came back just a few months ago mm -hmm. just to get together and do some concerts and make a group out of it and do an album, you know. But it's not the only thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. how, how did the group uh, uh, go down in, in the States? Did you have a lot of success? It's a, it's a fairly well-known group in the States, uh -huh. in the bluegrass field. Yeah. Maybe you can tell the audience what the Kentucky Colonels were, the original Kentucky Colonels. I mean, not musical, but uh, in the history of the United States. They were the, uh, weren't they the, uh, the people who took the Alamo in uh, uh, San Antonio? Oh, you don't know anything about it? Oh, no, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry I've embarrassed you. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> the Kentucky Colonels, it was a uh, group of uh, vrijbuiters die uh, in the strijd van Texas tegen uh, Mexico, toen Mexico, Texas over hier staat, uh, tegen het uh, Mexicaanse gezag opstonden in San Antonio. Maar goed, dit even terzijde. <laughs> uh, goed, ik ga, uh, um, de groep gaat nu zo dadelijk het toneel op. Ik, uh, so Clarence will even a few questions about uh, the besetting. Uh, two, the two of your brothers are in the group. Yes. And uh, one of the two uh, was also a member of the group which made uh, the two albums um, in the 60s, I think. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, the album which you are going to make, is that, is that the uh, solo album by, your, by you personally or is that... Uh, no, that's separate. I'll be doing that on my own. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, can you tell anything about people who are going to back you on this solo album? Yes, uh, I'm using Ry Kuder. Lee Scalar, Byron mm -hmm. Berlein, uh -huh. just different people like that. Yeah, yeah. So, behalve dus de LP die Clarence White gaat maken met deze groep, is hij ook met een solo LP bezig waarop onder andere Byron Berlein en Rijk Hoeder op zeilen. Wel, genoeg gepraat, dacht ik nu. We gaan, Clarence White gaat u naar beneden. Thank you very much and lots of success on stage. Thank you. Thank you.